Hi friends! Today we will learn about weight, mass, volume, and density and their relationship. So let's start. For every object we have four types of measurements. Mass, weight, volume, and density. And we need to learn these before we learn the concept of buoyancy. Out of these, mass and weight are often used interchangeably in general, but they have different meanings. Let's learn more about these. Mass. It is the amount of matter that a thing contains, and a thing can be a liquid, gas, or solid. Mass is generally measured in kilograms and grams. It is a constant quantity, that is, mass never changes regardless of where the object exists. For example, whether an object exists on any part of the Earth, or even on the Moon, or another planet, its mass will remain the same. Now let's learn about weight. Weight is the pull of gravity experienced by an object. For example, a person will experience a different pull of gravity on the poles than that on the equator. So a person's weight will be different on the pole to the Earth than on the equator. Also, a person or an object's weight will be different on the moon than on the Earth. And this is why astronauts have a different weight on the moon, and they experience almost weightlessness on the moon, because there is no gravity, and weight is all about the attraction of gravity. So we learn that weight is the pull of gravity experienced by an object. So. That is why it is different on different places of the Earth, or a different place other than the Earth. Because the pull of gravity is not the same everywhere, but mass is a constant quantity and remains the same everywhere. Because it is the amount of matter that an object contains, this will not change regardless of where the object exists. Here is a very interesting example for you. If a person weighs 185 pounds on Earth, he would weigh 68.45 pounds on Mercury. This is because the attraction of gravity is less on Mercury. So the same person will be 432.9 pounds on Jupiter because the force of attraction of gravity is more on Jupiter. So weight is directly related to the attraction of gravity experienced by an object or a body. Now let's learn the relationship between mass and weight. Weight equals the product of mass and gravity. So now we know what is mass and what is weight, and the relationship between them. Now, let's learn about volume. Volume is the amount of space that an object takes up. And the volume of liquids is measured in milliliters and liters. Whereas the volume of solids is measured in cubic centimeters or cubic meters. Here, one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. And we calculate volume by multiplying the length, width, and height of an object with regular shapes. Here we have an example. The height of this object is 2 centimeters, width is 3 centimeters, and the length is 4 centimeters. So its volume will be 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2, which equals 24 cubic centimeters. So this is the way to find out the volume of regular shapes. But how can we find the volume of objects that do not have a regular shape? For example, these ones. We cannot have a formula to find the volume of these irregular shapes. So in order to find the volume of these objects, we use the displacement method. An object with an irregular shape can be dipped in a container filled with water or any other liquid. And then we measure the amount of water it displaces. And the volume of water it displaces is equal to its volume. 
and the volume of water measured in milliliters or liters can then be converted to cubic centimeters or cubic meters. For example, if the volume comes out to be one milliliter, its volume is one cubic centimeter. Now here we have another example. We have to measure the volume of the stone. Here we have a graduated beaker filled with water. Now dip the stone into the water. Now read the graduated beaker to find out the volume of water displaced by the stone. It is about 1.5 milliliters. So the volume of the stone is 1.5 milliliters or 1.5 cubic centimeters. Now we have learned about mass, weight, and volume. Now it's time to learn about density. Density is the amount of mass per unit volume. And there are two types of density, weight density and mass density, but we will be commonly using mass density. Density is the amount of mass per unit volume. Let's try to understand this concept with examples. Here we have two objects of the same size and same volume. A piece of foam and a piece of wood. Now will they have the same mass and weight? No, the foam will be lighter than the wood. Why is this? It's because foam is less dense than wood. That is, foam has less mass and weight than the wood. In other words, foam has a lower number of particles per unit volume. And wood has a larger number of particles as compared to foam per unit volume. So foam is less dense. This is why its mass and weight is lower than that of wood. And wood has a greater number of particles per unit volume. So it's more dense. So its weight and mass is more than a piece of foam of the same size. Now, let's try to relate density and the particle theory of matter. We learned that all types of matter are made up of small particles, and they have spaces between them, and particles continuously move and attract each other. Also, particles move faster as they are heated. So, this was a particle theory of matter. We also learned that solids have the smallest spaces between their particles. Liquids have a slightly bigger space between the particles. And then gases have the largest spaces between the particles. From here, we can also see that solids are more dense. That is, they have the most number of particles per unit space. Liquids are less dense than solids, as they have larger spaces between their molecules. Finally, gases are the least dense, that is, they have the largest spaces between their molecules when compared to solids and liquids. So density is the number of molecules per unit volume. And solids are most dense. Liquids are less dense and gases are the least dense. And among solids, some solids may have even smaller spaces between their molecules, so they are more dense than other solids. Here we have some examples. Iron, copper, cardboard, wood. All of these are solids, but do they all have the same density? No, among these, iron is the most dense, copper is the next most dense, then wood, and then finally, cardboard is the least dense. And the reason is simple. The spaces between the molecules of iron is smallest amongst these four solids. So, iron is the most dense because the spaces between the molecules of cardboard is the greatest compared to the rest of the solids. Here we have measured the densities of different solid materials. The density of copper is measured to be 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of stainless steel is measured to be 
grams per cubic centimeters. The density of iron is said to be 7.87 grams per cubic centimeters. And finally, the density of aluminum is least among these. It is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeters. Similarly, various liquids will have different densities depending upon the size of the spaces between their molecules. Consider these liquids. Toothpaste, mayonnaise, honey, milk, and water. These are ranged from most dense to least dense. Toothpaste is the most dense. Then mayo, then honey, then milk, and then water. Water is the least dense liquid among these. Now let's learn an equation that exhibits the relationship between mass, volume, gravity, and density. Weight is the product of mass and gravity. And density is mass divided by volume. Now let's calculate the density for some materials given the mass and volume. A gas having the mass of 0.3 grams is filled in a container with the volume of 5 cubic centimeters. What is the density? We learned that density is mass divided by volume. Mass is 0.3 grams and the volume is 5 cubic centimeters. So density is 0.3 divided by 5. It comes out to be 0.06 grams per cubic centimeters. So density of the gas is 0 0.06 grams per cubic centimeters. Here we have another example. A wooden block has a mass of 50 kilograms and the volume of one cubic meter. So we have to find its density. We know density equals mass divided by volume. Here we have the mass of 50 kilograms and the volume of one cubic meter. So density is 50 divided by one kilogram per cubic meter. So the answer is 50 kilograms per cubic meter. Here we have another example. What is the density of gold that has a mass of 30 grams and a volume of one cubic centimeter? We know the density is mass divided by volume. We are given the mass of 30 grams and a volume of one cubic centimeter. So density is 30 divided by one is 30. So the density is 30 grams per cubic centimeter. So friends, now we know what is mass, weight, volume, density, and the relationship between all these perimeters. Now let's learn about the density of water. We know that water can exist in all three states, ice, water, as well as steam. That is the gaseous form, liquid and solid form. Now which state of water has the greatest density? The obvious answer should be ice. Because ice is a solid form of water, and we know that solids have the maximum density. But this is not true in the case of water. Ice is not the densest form of water. It's true. Ice is not the most dense form of water. Ice is actually less dense than the liquid form of water. Water is the most dense at the temperature of 4 degrees Celsius in the liquid form. Now let's learn the science behind it. All liquids tend to get denser as they cool. For example, milk. Frozen milk is more dense than the liquid milk. But in the case of water, it's not true. As we start cooling, molecules come closer until water reaches its temperature of 4 degrees Celsius. And afterwards, as the cooling continues, the distance between the molecules of water starts to increase till it forms ice at zero degrees Celsius. And the distance between the molecules of water at zero degrees Celsius, that is in the ice form, is more than the distance between molecules of water at four degrees Celsius. This is why the volume of ice increases. You must have seen, if you keep a water bottle filled with water in your freezer, it will start to crack upon freezing. Why does this happen? 
is because the volume of water increases upon freezing, and it may break the utensil in which you freeze it. So this is why the density of ice is less than that of water, as the number of molecules remains the same and the volume increases. So we can say that ice is less dense than water, or has a less number of molecules per unit space than water at 4 degrees Celsius. Now, can we answer a very interesting question? Why does ice float on water? We know anything that has a lower density than water can float on water. So, the answer is clear. Ice has the lower density than water, so ice floats in water. Now, let's learn another interesting topic. Why do lakes freeze from top to bottom? As winter approaches, the temperature starts to fall. Air gets colder faster than the water. So air becomes freezing cold, whereas water is not that cold yet. So the only water that comes in direct contact with the freezing cold air starts to freeze and forms sheets of ice on the water. And this sheet of ice is less dense and water, so it floats on the water. And its thickness may continue to increase if the temperature remains cold. This way, water in the lake starts freezing top to bottom. Now, here comes another question. Why do plants and animals living in the lake not die when a sheet of ice forms on top of the lakes in the winter? The water below the sheet of ice maintains its temperature at 4 degrees Celsius in most water bodies. And that happens because the layer of ice actually acts as a barrier or an insulation layer between the water and the harsh environment outside. We will learn more about this in higher grades. For now, you just need to remember that the layer of ice on the top of the lakes acts as an insulation layer between the cold outside environment and the warmer water underneath. And the plants and animals under the lake enjoy the warmer water when the environment above the water body is freezing cold. So we have learned the unique nature of water. Friends, today we have learned about the different measurement units of matter. Mass, volume, weight, density, and also the wonderful nature of water.